My birthday, the Tooth Fairy, and MASH are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is February 28th, 2022. It is the 59th day of the year. We got 306 days left in 2022. It's the ninth Monday in the 10th week and the 70th day of winter. We got 20 days left until spring, and there's only 365 days until my birthday. If today is your birthday, you're a Pisces. Today is National Tooth Fairy Day. February 28th is National Tooth Fairy Day, and it encourages us to take a look back on the history of one of dental care's little helpers. The Tooth Fairies start off in the 1920s as a way to kind of get kids to take care of their teeth, do things like wash behind their ears, eat vegetables. He was all about all that, and then at some point, he just turned into some dude that gives you cash for your teeth. But he originally started out like this healthcare mascot. I told my kids their tooth fairy was named Stu, and he had a drinking problem. Because sometimes he'd drop off some change, other times he'd drop him off 10 bucks. He could never get it together. All right, let's see what else February 28th has given us. 1827, the first combined passenger and freight railroad is incorporated. 1849, steamboat service from New York to San Francisco begins. This trip must have sucked back then because the Panama Canal didn't open up until 1914. So that meant you had to go down to Argentina and Chile and Cape Horn area. You know, that little stretch of water between South America and Antarctica? 1954, the first color TV goes on sale. This was a giant leap in technology. I mean, the TV hadn't even been around that long. I mean, not everyone was on board with it yet. I remember my mom saying how my great-grandfather thought that TVs were just a fad and they were going to go away in a year or two. He didn't want one. Everyone wants a radio. Nobody wants one of these boxes where you watch some lights. It doesn't make sense. And then when cable television came around, my mom and dad were like, pay for television? Are you crazy? And I think I've slipped into that mode now because I look at TikTok and I don't get it. I mean, there's YouTube, which people are putting up videos that they worked on or something. If you watch TikTok, it's like they'll have a trend and then thousands of people will do their own take on the trend. It doesn't make sense. Like a dance move. So they'll show someone dancing to a song. And then like thousands of people will make their own video dancing to the same song. And a lot of times using the same freaking dance moves. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some very creative creators on there. There are. There are some really neat videos. But a majority, I'm talking like 90% of the stuff on TikTok is just people copying what somebody else already did. And it's one thing to be in the same genre as someone, but to actually do exactly what they're doing just seems kind of lame. 1958, a school bus in Floyd County, Kentucky hits a wrecker truck and plunges down an embankment into the rain-swollen Levisa Fork River. The driver and 26 children die in what remains one of the worst school bus accidents in U.S. history. That just sucks. Can you imagine that? Oh, that's horrible. That's the type of thing that a small town never recovers from. They always remember it. 1972, the United States and China signed the Shanghai Communique, which means they start talking again. 1983, the final episode of MASH airs. Almost 106 million viewers watched this last episode. It still holds the record for the highest viewership of a season finale. For a long time, it was the highest viewership for any show that was ever on television. Then some Super Bowls and stuff beat it. But MASH is easily my all-time favorite show. If you're too young or you're not from this country and you never saw MASH, this was a show that lasted from September 17th, 1972 to February 28th, 1983. And it was about a MASH unit, which stands for Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. It was during the Korean Wars when it's based, and it was about the surgeons and the nurses and, you know, anyone that comes through there to this hospital. And it was a great show. It had so many people in there, but the main people were Alan Alda, who played Hawkeye Pierce, Gary Berghoff, who played Radar Riley, Loretta Swift was Hot Lips, Mike Farrell, BJ Honeycutt, Jamie Farr was Corporal. Max Klinger, who he was only supposed to be on there for one episode, but everyone liked him so much, he stayed for like nine seasons. But it had Harry Morgan, Wayne Rogers, McLean Stevenson, Larry Linville, David Ogden Stiers, and William Christopher as Father Mulcahy. And it's based off a movie that was done years earlier. This show fell into so many different genres. Comedy drama, dark comedy, medical drama, sitcom, war movie, or war show, Originally, the movie, and then became the TV show, was based on a book or novel known as MASH, a novel about three army doctors. MASH lasted 11 years. 
The Korean War, which it was based around, only lasted three years. A lot of people think it was canceled, but no, it really wasn't canceled as much as they just decided it had gone long enough. I mean, it was still a very popular show when they decided to call it quits. I mean, you had all these actors that would been locked into this thing since forever. Actually, only two actors were in every episode, or at least lasted through all 11 seasons, and that was Hawkeye Pierce, played by Alan Alda, and Loretta Swift, who played Hot Lips Houlihan. The character Father Mulcahy, he was there for every single episode, but he was originally played by another guy, not William Christopher. There was another person, Nurse Kelly. She was on there, but originally she was just like a background person. And then around the fourth season, they started giving her speaking roles and stuff like that. Her name was Kelly Nakahara. It's kind of sad. She's overlooked a lot of times because she was with that show the whole time, and most people never focus on her. They kind of treat her like she was a B-list character on the show. She didn't have a lot of speaking roles, but she was an intricate part of the show. Sadly, she died in 2020 from cancer. If you're too young or you've never watched MASH, I would suggest watching it. It is a great show. 1991, the first Gulf War ends. Thank God. That desert is hot and dusty. 1993, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms agents raid the Branch Davidian Church in Waco, Texas, with a warrant to arrest the group's leader, David Koresh. Four ATF agents and six Davidians die in the initial raid that started a 51-day standoff, which included military tanks, which is not good. So this probably should have been the deep dive for this day, but next year's the 20th anniversary. I'm going to save it for that. I didn't overlook it. This is important. We'll just talk about it next year on the 20th anniversary. 2013, Pope Benedict resigns as the Pope of the Catholic Church. This is the first Pope to do this since 1415. That was Pope Gregory the 12th. Pope Gregory, that's not like a Pope's name. It's gotta be like Pius or Benedict or something like that. Gregory doesn't sound like a Pope name. Gregory's the friend who goes out drinking with you and forgets his wallet more than once. Premiered on February 28th, 2007, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? This was a pretty good show. I watched it religiously for the first couple seasons. I mean, not religiously like, you know, Pope Gregory, but pretty religiously. It had comedian Jeff Foxworthy as the host. It's a quiz show that features adult contestants who compete to answer questions from elementary school textbooks. Fifth grade classmates could help the adults with their answers and stuff. It was a pretty interesting show. Born on February 28th, me, but let's look at real stars. 1973, Eric Lindros, former NHL All-Star who spent eight seasons with the Philadelphia Flyers. He was selected first overall in the 1991 NHL Draft by the Quebec Nordiques. And he led the Flyers to the Stanley Cup in 1997, where they got destroyed by the Detroit Red Wings. They didn't even win a game in that Stanley Cup. It was sad. So this is why I bring him up. He was big and he was a really good player. He's a little bit bigger than most guys that are as good on offense as he was, so that was weird. But he always whined about everything. It was so bad that whenever he'd go to another stadium to play, there'd be people sitting up against the glass in the stands dressed like babies. <laughs> it was pretty funny, actually. Died on February 28th, 1967. Henry Luce, he was a magazine publisher who founded Time, Fortune, Life, and Sports Illustrated. He was born in China where his parents were working as missionaries. He started his magazines because he felt the American public was uninformed. I used to read Life magazine all the time. I mean, that was, I mean, I'm a little bit older, but that was normally like an old person's magazine or something like that. But I looked forward to getting Life magazine back in the day, and I was probably in my teens. But I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to American pop culture and history and stuff like that. Always have been. All right, that's today's video. Thanks for showing up. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.